guys i have a huge package from asia books they recently had a sale where everything was like 20 percent off or something this is a series i've been meaning to get it is eight books long this box is fucking huge and it's so heavy okay we're gonna open this now okay this actually really hurts i would use a cutter but someone took all the cutters from my room see if i had a cutter this would be so much easier oh my god oh my god let's unbox this first one this whole chunk is the rest of the books yay first we got empire of storms assassin's blade the first time i read the series i did read it third which is how it was published honestly i thought it hit really hard reading it third this was my favorite book out of the whole series kingdom of ash this book is really big queen of shadows throne of glass which is the first book this is kale's book this is the last one this is gonna look so good on the shelf altogether. I think I might just double stack them with the old books, which is so bad because I love how the old ones look. But, but I do want to read from these new ones because my old ones are so old. I had those books since I was in sixth grade. Now that I'm reading these anytime soon, honestly, I still haven't finished the Agatar series. I have two books left. I might skip A Core of Frost and Starlight. I don't know if that's a crime. Date. we're gonna do an unboxing together this is a birthday package that was sent to me by my friend she sent me one last year too and i unboxed it on camera but i never posted it this time i'm actually gonna include it in my vlog she is in like multiple vlogs of mine we've been best friends since seventh grade her birthday is coming up in december so i'll be sending her a package back as well but i'm excited to see what's in here yay okay there's a letter so i'm gonna read oh my fucking god oh my fucking god no she did not guys oh my god it's been seven years since we written birthday notes to each other he says don't forget that if one of us flops in life the other will be a millionaire willing to help we have like talked about this so many times we're like if one of us flops the other one will make it so we don't flop together you know okay first she got me this bookmark bird bookmarks to remind you of me and fern guys look at what she got me like she sent me this and she was like do you want this and i was like maybe i won't spend that much money on it perine this is actually the sweetest thing ever i love the letter though i'm gonna keep it with the million other i was gonna say i was gonna keep them with a million other letters but my camera rudely cut me off <laughs> glaring right now but i do think it's kind of pretty so i'll just i'll leave it i did some damage this bag of books and then i have this bag let me tilt it here light was like in my eye anyways let's dig into this haul i'm so excited i wanted to film a lot throughout the whole experience but there were so many people it's so awkward to film it's like disgusting be filming in public okay let's just go through all the books i got first i got babble i been wanting to get this on my shelf i don't know when i'm gonna read it i might read this before i read the poppy war just because the poppy war is a series while well, this is a standalone and i've heard the premise of the oh my god this text is actually insane this text is so terrible guys why is the text is small like seriously i just want to talk at least the book is floppy anyways this is a dark academia book i don't really know much about it yet i think it's about oxford Wow, this is already interesting. I'm already hooked and this is the author's note. The trouble with writing an Oxford novel is that anyone who has spent time at Oxford will scrutinize your text to determine if your representation of Oxford aligns with their own memories of the place. Worse, if you are an American writing about Oxford, what do Americans know about anything? I offer my defense here. And yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I am really excited to read this. So. Next, I got two books. There were only two in the series. So oh, I believe that this is the first one, which is Flawless. And then the second one is Heartless by Elsie Silvers. These are both romances that i think they're following different people is it the same couple the whole time 
Okay, I don't think it's the same couple though. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, okay, so I do think it's following different couples. Yeah, this is basically the Chestnut Spring series. And the only reason why I've been putting it off is because it's a cowboy romance. And I don't really know if I like cowboys that much to be reading about them. I do love reading about murderers, but I don't know if I like reading about cowboys. I don't know if that's gonna get me. I did buy the first two because I feel like a romance is a romance. I don't really care too much about anyone's profession in the romance. The cover is so gorgeous and I'm glad I got them because they're so pretty. So excited to read this. I will be reading this because I do need a romance break after so much fantasy I've been reading. Okay, next is also a series. I got the Natural series. First, I got this one, which is, oh, this is the same author as the Inheritance Game. If they had the Inheritance Game, I would have bought that too but they didn't have it i think anyways i got the first two books which is the naturals and then killer instinct they did have all four books and i i probably should have bought all four probably should have bought all four but like what if i don't like it i don't know if i'm like the type of person to buy the whole series just because i did that with magnolia parks i just cannot get past the midway point of magnolia parks this is the second time i've read magnolia parks and i've been stuck at the 50 percent mark both times i don't know what is wrong with me and i feel bad for dnfing it because i bought the whole series and i do like some parts of the writing but at some point it gets so repetitive that like okay we get it we get that you want bj that's why i'm not risking it i bought two books in this one honestly in this series i would have bought the whole series if they had it but they only had two maybe it's because i came on a later day they've had this sale since the 10th maybe in five days like the books were wiped this was a last minute purchase and i i don't know if this is a good idea or not i got the two sarah j mass books in her new series i think there's three in the series that's out right now the crescent city series but i don't think the third book is out in paperback i'm not sure i don't know if it's a mistake buying these two i don't know if i'm ever gonna get around to it i guess that depends on if i'm ever in the mood for like sarah j mass's work again but these books are very very thick i think they're both 800 pages or something which is absolutely insane but um at least this wolf on the cover is is quite cute maybe like two years later i've read both akatar and throne of glass and i'm gonna like i need a dose of sarah j mass you know so then i have those next are all kind of like single books that i picked up i picked up a curse for true love and this is in the other cover because the one that i have right now is in this cover and it's like it's like the hardcover size and like this is the paperback size. Look at how pretty this paperback is. This is one of my most favorite fantasy series, honestly. I love the series so much. And if you've never read Once Upon a Broken Heart, you have to because it's it's like my favorite thing ever. I love it. And I literally have a reading vlog on it if you want to go watch it. There was one girl who was picking up Once Upon a Broken Heart and reading the back of it. And I literally wanted to go up and tell her that this book is so good and she should definitely read it. But anyways, I didn't do that because social anxiety. But if I was holding a book and someone came up to me and they were like, this is... This book is really good. I would really appreciate that, especially if I'm like reading the back and stuff. I honestly would really appreciate that. Don't know if that goes for everyone though. Um, then I got Archer's Voice, finally. So many people have told me to get this book and I finally have it. Yeah, this is one of the top 100 romance novels of all time on Goodreads and this has been recommended to me so many times. I am going to read this. I'm excited to read it. I've heard nothing but good things about this and this is a lot of people's favorite romance. Okay, these are the last two books that I got. First, I got my dark romeo the title is so fucking embarrassing don't laugh i hate that this is a sticker like why do i need to know that it's loved on tiktok i think it's like an arranged marriage i'm not sure i looked at this book earlier this year like in january and i didn't buy it and i kind of regretted it because i saw someone else read it i wanted to buy it. also i've read something by lj shen before it was a dark romance i'm this is a dark romance this is not some sort of like romeo and juliet dancing in a flower field like this is a dark romance i'm pretty sure it's an okay it's an arranged marriage between a billionaire and an heiress i know lj shen i know i know she wrote something oh she wrote vicious i read vicious i might have read a lot of books by her actually oh my god i think i read a lot of books by her i don't know how i feel admitting that back when i was in high school i was 100% like a dark romance girly i read like i devoured dark romances like it was nothing um but honestly, I had no brain power to be reading anything else because like school was just so much back then. But anyways, I'm excited to have like another dark romance on my shelf. I have like no dark romances on my shelf, which is so undefining of my personality. And this is one of the first books I picked up while I was there. It is Masters of Death. I love her writing so much. I read One for My Enemy and that might be one of my favorite books. Some of the quotes in that book are going to be embedded into my brain forever. Viola Mark is a struggling estate agent and a vampire, but her biggest issue is that the house she's selling is haunted. The ghost occupying this mansion has been murdered and he refuses to move on until he solves the mystery behind his death. I remember watching someone review this and they said that this book is kind of unexplainable and you just kind of go into it blind. So that's what I'm hoping to do. That's my haul! I have so many books. I'm so in love.
are you crazy? This is this is my life. I get to read all of this. That's insane. Hi everyone, in this excerpt we're going to be doing something that I've never done on this channel before. I'm currently working on a fun little project and I've been watching a ton of writing vlogs. I thought I would add this little writing excerpt into this video. Technically it is still doing bookish stuff. I've been writing short stories all my life and I've been doing it on the side as a little hobby. Sometimes I journal, I write poems. I know, so artsy of me. And yeah, I thought I would film a little writing session for you. I'm probably not going to talk about this project in this video. We're just doing this for fun right now. I'm titling the project Bewitched. Hi guys, we're gonna do a little read with me because I haven't done that in this vlog and I feel like that's what's missing. We just haven't read together. So we're gonna be reading The Striker by Anna Huang. I have a physical copy coming in. I'm not even gonna lie, they were delivering it yesterday and I was still asleep. So I didn't pick up my delivery call and they ended up not delivering it yesterday. Hopefully they will come today. Oh my god, guys, I love Anna Huang so much. Anna Huang is like my celebrity. If I see Anna Huang on the streets, I will literally cry. She was like my favorite author last year. I think I read, I like spammed through all of her books last year. I also made a matcha. I did drink like a lot of it already. Okay, guys, this is not sponsored, but this matcha is like the best at home matcha I've ever made in my life. I'm genuinely so specific with my matcha. One time I went to this matcha store, it was literally a store specifically for matcha. They only sold matcha things. And I was like, oh my God, this is gonna be the best matcha I've ever tasted in my life. And yes, it tasted like expensive matcha, but the way they mixed the matcha, I just did not like it. I don't know why it tasted bad, but it just did. And I was like, oh my God, like there's something wrong with me. Like I'm so picky with my matcha. Around my area, there are only two matcha stores that I would buy from. So so like this is crazy that this is so good and I've been wanting to make my matcha at home because it's been getting expensive I just I need to be able to make my matcha at home and I've been trying and trying not sponsored I don't even know if you can order this if you live out of Thailand Also, if you live in Thailand, you need to try the Muji matcha The store people probably hate to see me coming and they're like, oh my god that fucking bitch again But seriously, it is so fucking good There's a Muji where I go to Pilates and she sees me coming so often But she actually was so nice and she's like started a conversation with me like the barista she was so sweet. I feel like if you live in other places, you probably get that a lot. You know, people just talk to people, but in Thailand, it's really not like that at all. And people keep more to themselves. I mean, unless you're like in a market and stuff that may talk to you a little bit, but like on a day-to-day -day basis, people don't really interact. So it was so nice to like see an interaction like that. I mean, I don't really mind when people come up to talk to me unless you're a creepy old man, you know? Actually, unless you're a man. <laughs> okay guys, I'm sorry, I rambled so much. I don't know if people actually like hearing me speak. <laughs> We're gonna read now. I have it on my Kindle. And yes, I do have a Kindle, but guys, let's be real. If I'm at home and I could read on this huge thing rather than my tiny Kindle, obviously I'm gonna choose my iPad. Hi guys, you guys can't see my dog. Um, we have another book haul. I feel like this video is just a collective book haul at this point. I don't know why I bought so many books this month. Let's open it together. Cute. It also gave me extra like cute paper. <laughs> Look at the striker in all its glory. My shelf is kind of full, but maybe I'll push um, the fine print back because I really did not like that book. Oh my God. I think there's like a little drawing here. Oh my God. This is so cute. This is so cute guys. Like I love that there's a drawing on the side. Now that I have the physical copy in my hands, I feel like I will be able to read it faster. I don't know. I just like the feeling of flipping a page and like tabbing and everything. I'm probably gonna end this video here. Thank you so much for watching this video. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye. You guys can say bye to my dog. Diamond, say bye.